Hi, Mark here from newhometricks.com and today I want to take a little bit of a look at HomeKit on iOS. Now my main smartphone is an iPhone, which is why I want to start here, but I do also want to have a look at some other systems in future, have a look at the Android side of things, maybe have a look at what can be done on Windows. But as my smartphone is an iPhone, it seemed like a fairly logical place to start. If you think back to the unboxing and setup video that we did when we installed Philips Hue, um, you go through the setup process and one of the steps there is to scan a little code on the back of the Philips Hue bridge that basically activates HomeKit integration and sets it up on your iPhone or iPad. Um, now obviously using a system like HomeKit the intention here is to provide a kind of central hub for you to control all of your smart home devices. Um, but in order to do that all of the devices that you have have to kind of be HomeKit enabled. There needs to be the special security chip inside the product to make it work with Apple HomeKit. But once you've got that you can then control all of your smart home devices from, from one place. Um, now obviously we've only got Philips Hue installed at the moment but as we expand our uh, smart home setup and we uh, start to put in um, smart security devices and smart heating and things like that we'll want to have a look at how that um, integrates with systems like this and of course this is just one of many ways that you might have some kind of overarching control over all of the smart home components that you've got in your house and we'll take a look at those as we you know develop our our smart home and add more bits in for now um, it's a fairly simple way to start by having a look at how using HomeKit and the home app controls um, something like Philips Hue so if you go into the home app um, you'll see that it's broken down into three fairly straightforward uh, screens across the bottom. You've got the home screen, you've got the rooms screen, and then you've got the automation tab, which allows you to use your uh, Apple TV. If you have one, we don't, um, but you can use Apple TV as effectively a, a kind of a home controller for uh, all of your systems so that things can be controlled even when you're away from home. Without that, um, you're just using your iPhone or iPad to directly interact with things. Now, when we set up Philips Hue, it populated um, the home kit and home app with all of the devices and accessories that we've got. So you've got this uh, living room Philips Hue um, icon here that represents the actual bridge itself. And then you've got some of the lights set up here. If you tap on any of these lights, it turns them on. And if you tap and hold, uh, it pops up with this brightness controller and you can simply slide up and down. Uh, and you can tap on the color button down at the bottom to change the color. Uh, there's various presets here and if you tap in the middle on edit you can pick a custom color and just tap on done. Um, and then if you tap on brightness it just goes back to that. You tap outside of that it goes back to the main screen. Um, you can also define various scenes. So I've defined one, I've defined the cozy scene and if you tap on that it immediately activates it. But one of the things that you'll notice is that even if I go into the rooms section here, because if you're on the main home screen, you're just looking at your favorite scenes and your favorite accessories, as uh, the Apple uh, app calls them. If you go into the rooms, um, this is showing you all of your scenes and all of your accessories defined in each individual room that you've got. Uh, if I tap on the little uh, menu button at the top here, you can edit the room, add a new room, change the name, even change the background wallpaper for each individual room. Uh, and if I tap the edit button, I can edit the scenes and accessories that I've got, change the name of the room. If I tap on the plus button, I can add more accessories and add scenes. Um, but the easiest way to um, do all of this is to simply allow Philips Hue to populate the HomeKit system with all of the accessories that you've got. And when you expand and add new accessories, uh, you have to just go into the settings section inside the Hue app, uh, into settings here, into HomeKit and Siri, and just sort of resync any new bulbs that you've added so that they pop up inside the Apple HomeKit system. And that saves you having to sort of manually re-add them all. Um, but one of the things that uh, I have noticed with the Home uh, HomeKit app is that um, inside of this um, any scenes that you've got defined inside Philips Hue don't actually appear inside the HomeKit system which is a little bit disappointing because you might want to activate various scenes that you've got set up inside Philips Hue but they're not going to be here there's no link between the scenes that are set up inside the main Hue app and therefore on your bridge 
and the scenes that appear here in the Apple HomeKit app. Even if I go into uh, Philips Hue, in the HomeKit and Siri section here, there's a, a section marked Scenes, and you, you kind of go into that and think, oh great, I'll be able to sync all of the scenes that I've set up in, in Hue into the Apple HomeKit system, but it doesn't work like that. So you can see here we've got the cozy scene created, but if I go back into the main Hue app uh, and have a look at the, the uh, living room as we've got, got it defined here, of course, I've got loads of scenes available um, that I can work with. And if I scroll through all of these, you can see uh, just a few of them that we've got set up. None of these will appear uh, over in the Home app. I've just got the one defined there. So that's a little bit disappointing that that synchronization doesn't occur. Um, one of the things that you can do within the Home app is you can actually group lights together. So here, for example, the living room tower lamp, if I tap on that and turn that light on, that's actually three bulbs grouped together. When I first defined those inside uh, the um, HomeKit system, they were just three bulbs, but you can then group them together. If I tap and hold and tap on the little details button, you can see here that it says accessories, three, and if you tap on that, that goes into the um, the group and you can see each individual bulb separately. So you can still control them separately, but it just means that they will now appear as one accessory device inside the home system. Um, one benefit of using the HomeKit app that I can see is the ability to access this from the control center. If you swipe up from the bottom of the screen, your favorite accessories and favorite scenes can all be accessed from here. Um, so going to scenes, you can see the cozy scene that we've got defined there if we go back to accessories. And this, if you allow it, can also be um, shown from the lock screen as well. So if I swipe up from the lock screen, you can see the same things there. Now that's pretty cool because it means that um, you don't necessarily have to unlock your phone and find the right app in order to turn certain accessories um, and lights on or off. You can just do it straight from the home screen, which makes it a little bit quicker and easier to do this. Now, one of the main benefits of having something like this set up as well is also the ability to use Siri on your smartphone to just be able to tell your phone what to do and tell it to turn the lights on and off. Um, now that is something that I'm going to look at in a separate video and in a separate blog post. But for now, I guess I'm kind of lukewarm on this. It doesn't provide the same level of control over Philips Hue as the main app does. That's probably fairly obvious, but there are a few things missing here, like, as I say, the ability to actually activate the scenes that I've got built into Philips Hue. Of course, there are more advanced features inside Philips Hue, some of the stuff that we've been using uh, from Philips Hue Labs, for example, that we've been exploring in previous articles and videos. You can't access and activate any of those from inside HomeKit. So you're just kind of getting fairly basic functionality. But, as mentioned at the start of the video, one of the main reasons to have kind of an overarching system like this is to be able to control multiple smart home components from one app um, without having to launch each one separately. So, I guess it's not really fair for me to judge this too harshly yet until we've got more smart home components in, and then we can see how something like this works. And as I say, maybe there'll be a bit more benefit to it once I've started exploring things like Siri. Um, I do, of course, want to explore, as mentioned previously, um, other ways of controlling the system. So in Windows, are there any apps that I can use there to link this up to uh, Cortana, for example? Um, we might look at getting some sort of smart home speaker that you can talk to, like the Amazon Echo or maybe Google Home, and compare and contrast all of these different approaches for having some level of overarching control. But for now, that's HomeKit and the Home app. I have written a blog post to go with this video, the link to which is in the description below. Um, in the meantime, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.